One time a child came to their father, said, Dad, I'm just not sure you love me. I know you tell me you love me all the time, but I'm not convinced. I just don't think you really care whether I do good or bad. I'm just not sure you'd be there to help me if I needed you. Now, how would you feel if your child said that to you? Would you feel brokenhearted? Perplexed? Blown away? Maybe all those things, especially if you really did love your child and you did want them to do good and you would do anything that you could to help them. One time I, I talked to a dear lady. She was a brand new Christian, although she was quite elderly. She had just been baptized but uh, was very ill and, and wouldn't live long due to that illness. And she said to me, with tears in her eyes, I'm just so troubled. I'm just not sure God can forgive me of the sins I've committed in my life. And I did my best to, to reassure her and to teach her it's understandable in one sense the way she felt because she was a brand new Christian and uh, she had some growing to do, but she really didn't have a lot of time left in this world to do that growing. Another time I talked to one of my best friends. He grew up a lot like me in the church, obeyed the gospel as a young person and had lived for Christ all his life up to that point. But just like uh, that brand new Christian, his heart was all torn up and he was filled with doubts about whether God could or would forgive him for a past sin. And so we talked and, and cried and, and prayed together and tried to move forward. Have you ever talked to a person that was thinking about making a commitment to Christ who expressed their reluctance to obey the gospel in terms like these, saying something like, God can't forgive me, or I can't be good enough. Well, if any of those things apply, I want you to listen to a Bible text with me this morning from 1 John chapter 3, beginning at verse 19. 1 John 3, verse 19. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. The Apostle John, who wrote this passage, seemed to really want the people under his spiritual care to have confidence about their relationship with God. He stresses confidence. If you look back in chapter 2 of the same book, uh, verse 28, he writes this. He writes, And now, little children, abide in him. And he's talking about Jesus. 
Abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. Then in chapter 4 of the same book, verse 17, he, he writes, By this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. And then in the last chapter of the letter in verse 14, it says, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And then again in the text that we're in uh, for our study this morning, chapter 3, verse 21, he says, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. God wants his people to live in confidence, obviously. That is his intent for us as to how we'll live our lives in Christ. That is why he did all he did in Christ, to offer us confidence, assurance of salvation. But oh, sometimes our hearts can get in the way, can't they? Our hearts can tell us something different. They can, in fact, lead us astray, can they not? Despite all the evidence to the contrary, despite what we can read in the testimony of Scripture, despite the cross of Christ, despite the empty tomb, our hearts can say something else to us. I've experienced it in many ways. You know, I've studied the Bible with people and will come to a passage that really convicts them, perhaps shows them what they need to do, and they will read the passage and then maybe read it again and will say something like, I know what it says, but I just feel... see the heart our feelings can fool us can't they emotions can rule the day and in fact ruin the day and I don't want to put this all off on other people or even all off on on you because I have had the exact same struggles God says one thing, but my heart says another. So I want you to notice here with me in our text what John says about that in, in his portion of the word of God. What does he say about when God says one thing and our heart says another? Verse 19, again, he begins, By this we shall know. By this we shall know. No, K-N-O-W. By this we shall know, not think so, not hope so, not cross our fingers and toes and wish for the best. No. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. By what, John? By this, he says. Now look back at what John is referring to in verses 16 through 18, the same chapter. What is the this in John's by this? It's verse 16. By this we know, love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. So what is this confidence that John wants us to have based on. What's it based on? It is based on Christ, on the cross, and our following in the way of Christ and the cross. I should be confident before God because Jesus died on the cross for me, and I have now picked up my cross and am following Jesus 
to the best of my ability. Not saying that I never mess up, but I am carrying the cross, following Jesus in the path to the best of my ability. Jesus was the sacrifice for me, and now I give my life for others in imitation of what Jesus did. By this, we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. Pretty important by this, isn't it? But look on here in verse 20. Because the, the apostle talks directly about our problem, our heart problem. What do we do about it? What do we do when our heart condemns us? When we realize what God has said and, and yet our heart is saying something else. What does the child do when they're not so sure their parent loves them? What does the new Christian do when they struggle? with whether they believe God has really indeed forgiven them for past sins or not? What does the long-time Christian do when they begin to suffer with internal doubts about their standing before the Most High God? What about the prospective Christian, the one who, who's interested but whose heart says to them, you're not good enough. God will never forgive you. You can't do this. John says, whenever our heart condemns us, what? Say it. God is greater than our hearts. I want you to say that with me. God is greater than our hearts. Do you believe it? Do you believe that? God is greater than our hearts. I tell you today, it's one of the most important things you can believe. That God is greater than your heart. We have to believe that, folks. Or we have all kinds of problems. They just cascade down from that lack of belief. John restates it in the next verse, in verse 21. He says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. See, this, this heart issue will influence our prayer life. If our heart's right, our prayers will be right. We'll be confident in prayer, you see. And then in verses 23 and 24, we, we find out that this heart thing relates to obedience as well. Look at it. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of the Son, of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us, Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him and he in them. A heart that is in the right place will help us to be obedient to God. So confident prayer, confident <laughs> obedience based on the fact that God is greater than our hearts. It's sad to hear when people suffer heart failure. We've probably all known somebody that has. It happens every day. It's so sudden, it's so devastating when it happens, physically speaking. Heart failure is a very devastating thing, but I'm telling you, spiritual heart failure is so much worse. It is so much worse, and the effects potentially are so much more grievous and long-lasting. Spiritual heart failure will keep a person from ever obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
It will prevent people from ever believing that their Father in Heaven loves them, that He truly loves them. And it will sow seeds of doubt even in the heart of a believer, and it'll steal their joy. And it will rob them of the peace that God wants them to have. So John tells us, God is greater than our heart. See, here's some things we just have to come to understand. If, if we want to be the people of God, our heart is not the judge. God is. Our heart is not the source of mercy and grace. God is. And our heart, believe it or not, does not know everything. But God does. God is greater than our hearts. See, we, we all have to ask ourselves and, and answer a question. What is the basis of our relationship with God? Is it how good we are? Or how great God is? God is is greater. God is greater than our hearts. Jesus one time was talking about his followers and he was on this occasion referring to them as his sheep, his flock. And he, he talks about how he had given them eternal life and how they listen to him and how they follow him. And then he says this, it's recorded in John chapter 10 verse 29. He says, my father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. Do you hear what the Lord said? No one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. Oh, if we could believe that verse. Oh, if we could just convince ourselves that God is greater than our hearts. I just leave that with you to think about and meditate on and study out. Because if you're struggling in your heart with your relationship with God, whether having been a Christian for decades, maybe a, as a new Christian, or maybe a person that just, you're thinking about it, but you just don't think you can do it. I ask you to think about the fact that God, who created your heart, is greater. And all that can mean to you in your relationship with him. If you need to make a change this morning in any way, if you need to uh, call on the confident prayer of your brothers and sisters before God for you, or if you need to make that step and meet Jesus this morning in the waters of baptism, meet his blood, we're giving you an opportunity to, to come and let us know about those things, and we'll do our best to help you and serve you. That invitation is always open. It's not just for the next few moments, but these moments are important. And so we offer them to you now. Please let us know if we can help you while we stand and sing.